I always believe in training hard. Real stupid, brutal hard, and resting extremely hard as well. You gotta train hard, you gotta rest hard. People didn't understand that. They never talked about that in the magazines in the 80s. First went to California, I thought whatever Arnold does, I'm gonna do. That's why I went to study with the masters. So Arnold had a blonde girlfriend, I got a blonde girl. Arnold drank coffee, I started drinking coffee. He had hash browns for breakfast and potatoes, I had potatoes for breakfast, whatever. So I trained with him six days a week, twice a day. I go, here's what the best in the world does, the very best in the world. I have the opportunity to train with the best in the world. I got small and weak, I got small and fat training twice a day, six days a week. I'm like, I'm depressed. I'm in California, 50 bucks on a plane ticket, living with 25 people across the street from the gym. I'm in heaven and I can't put it together. What do I do now? I did what Arnold did and I got small and fat. I went back to the gym after three weeks off. I'm bigger and I'm stronger. I'm picking the big dumbbells, 180 pound dumbbells. I realized I can't train six days a week, twice a day. I can train three and four days a week. That's the secret for me. For arms, it was never about high workload. 40 pound dumbbell, it was all it took. Finesse. And I watched Arnold all those years when I was early in Santa Monica, and I'm thinking, I never saw him go over a 40 pound dumbbell. Some of the greatest arms I've ever seen. I would come into the gym early in the morning when nobody's watching. I can't go in the gym and handle 15 pound dumbbells. People are gonna take pictures of this, and you know, they had, you know, I can't, I'm, I'm embarrassed. So I'd go in the gym with a 15 pound dumbbell, teach myself how to do reps and the importance of supination and pronation. So I realized for arms, it wasn't about the weight, how much volume or how much workload. It was about the intensity. I got chest down early on. I got legs down early on. Back and arms were like, wow, how do you do that? Okay, I was a tugger. I was an old, I was a strength athlete. I wanted to move big, big weights. I would watch Robbie Robinson. To this day, to this day, when Robbie Robinson's doing seated cable rows in the gym, I stop and I watch. It's just so perfect. And the way he does seated cable rows, the way he does T-bar rows, the way he does back training, and there's a style and there's love, and I, I give my attention to that, and I try to emulate that. Using less weight and finesse, using my fingers and cocking my wrists like Robbie does. He doesn't know he does this, but I've watched him for a year. Those are the things that really work for me. My way of training is I pretend I have a wet towel. I won't give it up until I get every single drop out of the towel in terms of my training a muscle. You know, I want to get every single drop out. I won't leave anything left. And it's worked for me uh, based upon my fiber type and body type. I always believe in training hard. Real stupid, brutal hard and resting extremely hard as well. You gotta train hard, you gotta rest hard. People didn't understand that. They never talked about that in the magazines in the 80s. All they talked about was training hard. People thought I did that every day. I would squat twice a month. My very best, and my very strongest, that's all I squatted. Imagine doing 50 reps, you know, with 405 pounds. Your nervous system is fried. I'd leave the gym going, maybe in 10 days I might start thinking about squatting again, you know?